guys, how are you? This is my build of the Portuguese Caravelle from Occidental, uh, Portuguese company which no longer operates in the market, unfortunately. Great kits, it had fantastic kits. Um, it's on 1 to 100th scale. And this is my alma mater. Uh, the Portuguese Caravelle played a fundamental role in the adventures of Portugal maritime discoveries. This genuinely Portuguese craft was adapted from the Arab Mediterranean vessels so as to be suitable for sailing in the South Atlantic. Um, its flushboards, or as they say, caravel built, and Latin sails are typical of the Mediterranean in contrast with the overlapping boards, or clinker built, and square sails employed in Northern Europe. This ship could do one thing that back then no other ship could do, was to sail against the wind. Well, not exactly against, but took, uh, but could diagonally sail and go upstream. Okay, um, this size of caravels generally is not very large, and was measured by the number of rumus in the keel, which one rumu was equal to 1.536 meters. Uh, it was a ship that could sail in relatively shallow waters and along coast coastlines easily entering an existing bays and river mouths okay sometimes penetrated upstream the river it needed only a small crew which allowed for longer voyages with a minimum of provisions and uh we nailed this we totally ruled the seas back then um no offense to the spanish or the english or the dutch uh, but that's true we invented the caravel this was back then this was our space shuttle <laughs>
And after his death, this passage was discovered around the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, the fear of the unknown was left behind, and along with the stone pillars testifying to the Portuguese presence in the African la lands, and uh, all those tears of those lost in storms and celebrated uh, names such as Gilianes, Diogo Cão, and Bartholomew Diaz, which was the one that made the Cape of Good Hope uh, discovered and turned um, we used to say that there was a monster on the Cape of Good Hope, we call it the Adama Store. And, um, well, this is part of our history. After turning the Cape of Good Hope, uh, the fear of the unknown, was left behind and uh, the road has been opened uh, for the new feature feat which was to be Vasco da Gama discovery of the waterway to India which by the way had only 27 years old when he discovered uh, India's uh, waterway we all see those paintings and well he probably has 45 46 no, he was only 27 years old when he did that trip. Um, with the caravel, the Portuguese caravel made a decisive contribution, this one, to the meeting of civilizations and to the transformation that occurred to the history of humanity. More than the vessel, this caravel, with its simple forms, perfectly suited to its missions, um, it represents a symbol of change for a wider world uh, back then. I'm only telling you this because I wanted, really wanted you to, to capture the history of this ship. Obviously, the build, you can look at it. I am doing it, I am cleaning, scraping, sanding, gluing, that's something that you already know how to do. Now the history of this, this ship, this object, this theme, this subject, that's quite different and that is the one thing I wanted to share with you. Because um, builders, there's a lot of builders out there much better than I, much better than me. However, the history of this ship belongs to me and to Portuguese people and I wanted to share that with you. Now let's start painting this uh, brownish characteristic uh, old ship, classic ship, brown, wood brown. Um, I'm using directly oils, burnt sienna. Um, with linseed oil for um, a faster drying time because oils last forever to, uh, to cure, to dry. So uh, in order to uh, make the process of drying the oil paint faster, I use linseed oil uh, with a brush, applied with a brush, of course. Very light coats because linseed oil makes, actually makes the paint go a bit fatter, a bit oilier, okay? So please have that in mind. I made a video explaining this technique uh, a few months ago, so if you are interested in uh, learning it, please uh, check that video, because um, everything I'm doing here, I placed it on that video.
Here I am using a copper color, Vallejo copper, with a bit of retarder, paint retarder, uh, to do some detail painting on the nails used uh, on the construction of the caravel and on the, the supports of the rudder. After you apply all this oil paint, uh, please let it dry for two to three days. If you let it for four, even better. Uh, and then seal the whole work with two or three coats of clear coat, okay? Just to be sure. Thin coats, but seal it with clear coat. Please note the difference between with oils and without oils. Here I applied um, an AK wood wash, but you can also apply it uh, instead of it a brown oil wash. But it has to be a darker, darker brown oil wash, okay? Black, it would be too much. Applying the wash. And cleaning it. Please, again, make sure that before you apply the wash, there are two or three coats of clear varnish, okay? Now let's detail this ship a bit with a bit of armor brown, but you can also use mahogany brown. Now let me share another uh, thing with you. Uh, this is a very typical Portuguese thing. We, we sometimes think that what belongs to us, what is Portuguese, we tend to be, I sometimes tend to be a bit pessimistic and to think, well, I'm looking at a kit, Portuguese kit, and I think, oh God, this is going to be problematic to build. No, turns out it was a pleasure to build. The deck just snap fitted and if a deck just snap fits on a hole of the kit, well it's it's a pleasure to build this. It was indeed a pleasure to build this kit. Occidental Replicas does tremendous build uh, uh, kits and I have the Rebillo uh, bark, the Rebillo boat, typical from uh, the El Porto city where I live and work and I intend to build it sooner or later because if it's as pleasant to build as this one, I can, I just uh, look forward to it. Those cut marks on the ladders were all removed with a tiny bit of uh, oil paint uh, of the same base color. Now let's work on the ocean diorama. Um, 
you use a portrait and uh, remove the glass and a bit of uh, isolation foam and then you draw a bit of uh, the ocean the marks that you want give it a bit of indentation uh, marks of the waves a bit ups and downs and uh, well let me explain through the old through all the process One thing I can advise you to is never on a sea diorama, never put your ship straight parallel to the square surface of the diorama. Just place it a bit diagonally and on this, on this case a bit tilted because of the rough seas and the waves. Now, uh, in truth, I have to tell you that um, you're going to see images from one of my two attempts to do the diorama. Thing is, I made the first and uh, the paint work uh, was more uh, deep ocean, uh, more grayish tone and I was happy with it. However, the shape of the sea was not satisfactory to me and the second one uh, despite the fact that I don't feel it's wrong or it's worse um, I like the shape more and I made the ocean tone a bit bluish so in this video it is only demonstrative you are going to see two attempts but only one result I would like to say right now that this technique that I am using, I saw my good friend Jose Brito, a great modeler, doing it and uh, inspired me to do this, okay? Obviously I wouldn't say this is my technique. This is one of the techniques I, I tested and I enjoyed it so much uh, that I am doing it according to his teachings, let's say, which right now I would like to thank Jose Brito. Uh, muito obrigado, Zé. Uh, muito obrigado, Brito. Foi fantástico o teu apoio. Obrigadíssimo por tudo. Thank you very much. Oh, and um, I know that you noticed, but uh, this watercolor paper soaked in water, okay? Don't forget. This is balsa wood, uh, you draw the limit with the waves of the diorama and then you cut it in order for uh, the foam, the isolation foam to be completely covered with um, the balsa wood. It gives it a better uh, look when you paint it all black.
now base color 71053 dark sea green from Vallejo and uh, more ahead we will dilute the same color with a bit of off-white just to give him some tonalities um, and we will work after with the airbrush just doing the, the the top of the waves giving that some depth and some texture to the ocean diorama end of all this paintwork the work will be sealed with Vallejo still water um, you can apply a coat or two of Vallejo still water and let it dry for at least 24 hours and um, you will see that it is much better obviously than an X22 coat and it stays shiny it gives that water look because it's what it really matters on still water, Vallejo still water, and it gives you that um, water look, the ocean wet look on the diorama. As I said before, after all this uh, paint work, I sealed the whole uh, work with uh, a bit of um, still water, Vallejo. However, then I realized that uh, a bit of uh, several shades of blue would be better. Actually, I know that uh, maybe José Brito defends and stated that, uh, well, Alex, a uh, bit of a uh, dark gray is better because 
the sea gray, the the ocean is uh, it's not as blue as people think. It is dark as hell, and I agree. Um, but then, and I corrected uh, two or three times all the the, the paintwork. That's why you see me apply the Vallejo still water and then paint. I should have done everything only at the end, applied the still water only after all the paintwork has done has been done. However, um, it, it is my first time on doing this technique, so it is a learning uh, curve, and I did learn a lot. Um, so, yeah, that's what I did. I applied several layers of uh, paint, and then several layers of Vallejo steel water, because I was always uh, improvising. And here, um, believe it or not, I'm using some toilet paper. Um, soaked in steel water uh, to simulate the waves of the wake of the ship um, you will see more ahead and please uh, bear that bear this with me um, I overreacted exaggerated a bit on uh, on this part and then more ahead I realized that uh, well Alex this is a bit too much you are always saying less is more so if less is more please remove the whole five tons of paper that you placed as a wake of the ship. And I did remove more than half than you see me place here on the diorama. As I saw, as I told you, this is a learning curve, curvature for me, and uh, I learned a lot. I removed uh, and um, disguised more than half with the paintwork uh, more ahead, okay? Thank you.
finger, the best polisher in the world. As I already told you, well, I removed more than half of what I've did here, but hey, uh, no problem at all. It went well, just the same, but um, yeah, it was a bit too much. Here, um, let's try and uh, make these sails, these cloth sails, uh, weathered and dirty and old. Um, I used strong black tea. Some of you may say, but Alex, tea and coffee are acidic, uh, thin acrylic paint must be better, or regular fabric dye. No, sorry, I respect your opinion. Black tea makes fantastic uh, sales um, 
weathered and dirty and old and grimed. It is fantastic for this kind of work. Now let's start working on this sail. What I wanted is a representation of this sail completely full of wind, completely open, curved. And um, these are cloth sails, not plastic or a back form. So what I did was between the stitches on the edges of the sail, I placed 0.3 millimeters uh, soldering wire because it's very flexible. And this way, after I place the, um, the sail on the mast, I can turn it and work on it in order for it to take the shape like it's opened and full of wind, making the boat go forward. And here we are stitching the sail to the mast, uh, both sails, same method. We're using a needle. Um, well, when you're a military and you have to uh, do your own stitching, and when you don't have anyone by your side to do that right there, well, you're in the army now. <laughs> I learned that, but I had to relearn this skill. I had actually had to relearn this skill, but it was very interesting to see the way that the sail could be attached to the mast without using glue. It was very interesting.
This is Vallejo water uh, texture. This is a gel based paste, white paste. You apply it and it goes dry and dries uh, transparent like water. Uh, I did this because the water diorama lacked something. It was too uh, dull, too artificial. And so I gave it a bit of a um, texture, a bit of 3D, and then gave it a um, light uh, dry brush uh, with uh, faded white, old white, and it turned out great. When you see the waves just turning a bit white, that really paid off and uh, it opened the way for me to do something that I would never thought I would able, be able to do on a sea diorama. And you will see why and I will explain and you will probably call me a bit crazy, but um, it worked. This is toilet paper soaked in uh, Vallejo still water. I thought that the top of the waves needed a bit of a texture, a bit more 3D let's call it. And uh, uh, in my opinion you will see the, the images and the final result and then you be the judge of it. I think it turned out great. I just wanted to say that this diorama doesn't pretend or have the intention to be 100% uh, realistic. It's kind of a graphical um, display where I want to really, really put out and, and make you look at the caravel. Uh, I even placed some uh, crew on the caravel, however I painted it all um, light sea grey because 
it is just a symbolic representation of all its crew and all Portuguese that sailed across the seas on this caravel okay so this is a bit how can I say cartoonish maybe but I wanted to do a good work on this because it really deserves and um, this is my kind of representation where I want you all to look at the caravel. Now, yes, you are, <laughs> you are seeing it well and right. A wash, a um, light gray um, wash, um, and then a bit of dark gray wash also. Why? Because the sea is not always clear, transparent, and full of light. The waves cover the light, make shadows. That will give a bit of depth also to the waves. And at the same time, tone the blue a bit as a filter and uh, make it look not so bluish, okay? Um, I After cleaned it, I was a bit afraid of its uh, effect, but it really, in my opinion, you then tell me in the comments below if you agree or not, but in my opinion, it turned out just great. Thank you.
it's done. It took me six to th seven months to do this, but I stopped in the middle. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, please subscribe, be my guest, click on that notification bell if you want, and um, I'll see you on the next one. And um, as always, keep modeling, guys. Keep modeling, always with a smile. As big as a smile as the one I got when I look at this when it's finished. Passaram além da Taliban.